Welcome to today's podcast. This will be our second one for the sport and recognition. I am here with Megan, Evan, Javier, Sarah Lynn, and my name is Cynthia. I'm going to be hosting this podcast, and today we're going to be talking about gender equality in sport. Um, so, what kind of made me want to talk about this was an article that my friend um, emailed me, and it was called uh, Somehow the Best Pro Women's Hockey Players owe their team money, and it was about the CWHL um, Boston team where Hillary Knight, she's an American uh, Olympic player, uh, she plays there, and it outlined that the team, um, that teams playing in the CWHL are responsible for ticket quotas, and each player must either um, fundraise enough money to be able to play for the team, or uh, they have to pay out of their own pockets, and it's just interesting because at a professional level you look at the NHL um, you see how much they're getting paid and then you look at women's hockey and it's very different so that's kind of why I wanted to talk about gender equity or equality but um, just to begin I'd like to go over for the rest of uh, you guys what you consider equality is before we get into equality, I just want to mention that the, that difference between women's hockey and men's hockey doesn't happen just in hockey. Like the NBA, it's been supporting the WNBA for the last few years anyways. So it's just not about that special sport or specific sport. Mm-hmm. It happens in different sports. The yeah. NHL doesn't have um, any association with the CWHL. No, but the Except NBA today. does. Except today, the Montreal Canadiens oh. announced a partnership with... Nice. The Montreal Stars. Probably because of this article. Probably, yeah. Breaking right. news, yeah. breaking news. So, we <laughs> are talking about um, relevant things. Yes. <laughs> da-na-na, da-na-na. <laughs> so, going back, <laughs> um, for you guys, when you think about equality, what do you think about? Opportunity, like equal opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yes. Exactly. You stole, you stole my what, word. That's, what what does talk, that that's mean? why I spoke first. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Um, well, obviously, like in hockey, like CWHL and NHL, it's the equal opportunity is not there for men and women. Um, but that I don't know. That's just what I think. Like equality is having the equal opportunity for both men and women to do, you know, to reach their potential in whatever capacity that is, whether it's in sport or not. Yeah, I, I like, like the word opportunity because that's the thing we can control. Mm-hmm. Give them the right. we we have the resources to actually give them an equal opportunity. Whether that opportunity leads to profitable leagues, to sponsorship, to a career, it's a totally different conversation. But opportunity, we can actually give. Agree. Mm-hmm. That was great. Okay. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you got anything? You guys stole my word. Opportunity <laughs> is, like, uh, I guess, like, for me, when I think about it, it's, you know, equality, having equal, like you guys said, equal opportunities. Um, to enjoy the sports they love, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I think for me. Okay. I think it shouldn't be confused with, um, we're saying equal opportunity because it shouldn't be confused with, because there's a women's team, there should be a men's team. That's not necessarily the case. Okay. I mean, um, or just because um, someone can play here doesn't mean that someone else can play there. Just because you need equal number of like men and women or whatever it is, it's it's. What's the thought I'm trying to formulate and get out of my mouth? Um, it's not a given. The opportunity is there, and it's up to the individual to reach their potential and to take that opportunity mm-hmm. and to use it. Is what I'm trying to say. Okay, no, that's fair. Um, so, if that's the case, do you think really, going off of what you just said, Sarah, do you think that there is equality in sport? Like, or can sport have equality then, to be a bigger point? If you look at the definition of what sport is, I think we're looking it's... at competition between two people or two teams. Are we looking at it from like a, like a recreational level, elite sport? It doesn't matter. Sport? In, any, think... in any capacity, you're still, there's still some sort of competition. Yeah. There's still... You know, you have to have a winner or a loser. You have to, you know, there there is the definition of sport. I th- so I think if I we think stick to so. like our our definition that we formulate as a group is mm-hmm. the opportunity. I think that's possible. I don't think there's. I don't think that our society is there yet. 
um, due to different factors in society that um, maybe we'll say privilege is given to men in sport rather or over women. Mm -hmm, for sure. The issue as well is that um, we can actually create opportunities, but whether that opportunity is sustainable will depend on the consequences of giving opportunity. I mean, like you can actually give the opportunity for a women's league, professional women's league, to to actually happen, for example, mm -hmm. and create like, an equivalent of the NHL for women. But that doesn't matter; they're gonna get paid. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that they're gonna actually be successful. It doesn't mean that they're gonna be on TV. So. It also depends in which a scenario we're talking, whether it's like for youth programs to have equality, yeah. right? In which mm. the target wouldn't be prof profit, it would be, I don't know, Just participation. participation. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. that's what I was looking for. So the, the potential of every project in which you look for equality, it's, it's, it's a big part of this conversation. Going off of participation, that's not the only concept of youth sport, right? So there's competitive sports teams and all that. So again, I go back to, can you actually have equality in youth sport? Can you, are you able to give that opportunity? I think it depends what, I mean, how it's, you're trying to view equality. Is it gender equality? Is it equal play in time? I think, well, even gender equality, for example, um, in the context of hockey to date, you have a Bantam AAA girls team. You have a Bantam AAA boys team. Because you have a Bantam AAA girls team, you are, your opportunity to play on the Bantam AAA boys team is taken away from you just because there's a AAA girls team that you can play on instead of going to stay with the boys. They will not allow you to. That's taking away your opportunity. So at a youth level, you're looking, we're looking at gender equality right at this minute, and that's happening. Can we really say that this is provide like this is what kids are growing up with? Okay, so what you're saying is that in hockey, when you grow up, you have separate but but equal. Is that what you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? No, what because I'm saying is if if everybody is given the equal opportunity, okay. Yeah. I'm a female hockey player. I'm growing up. There's a Bantam AAA boys team and there's a Bantam AAA girls team. I want to play on the boys team because I want to be better, okay? Naturally, the boys teams usually have a higher level of competition than the girls teams. Depending on the situation and all that, you might have just an upcoming AAA girls team, blah, blah, blah. But they will not allow you to play or try out for the Bantam AAA boys team if there's a Bantam AAA girls team that you could play for because they are trying to initiate female hockey in Canada. So they will stop that opportunity from happening for you. But I kind and I've of, been in that situation. I kind of see why, though, because, I mean, boys mm -hmm. can't go play the girls' band on AAA, whether they want yeah. to or not. So, so like, it's, 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 making there. It, it's kind of making it equal, right? Like, yeah. you know, the boys can't go to the girls, the girls can't go to the boys. Whether yeah. you want the higher competition or not, like, you're going to, I don't know, you're, you should get that elsewhere. Well, I don't know. I, not, I, I, don't know. I see your point. Like I struggle with that because, but again, you, know, like, you're, you're you should be able to play wherever. But boys you can't playing, say that because the boys can't play. The, the boys aren't allowed to play. But on the girls boys teams. not playing on girls team that's taking away opportunity for them. Right, but what if, if the opportunity what if they, isn't there for the boys to play on the girls and the girls to play on the boys, then is that not equal? Not necessarily. You're not helping either one of them. It's like but indifferent. I think but I see Megan's point. It's yeah. equal. But I'm not talking about like opportunity. Like I'm talking but about like you're talking about specifically. Yeah. It being competitive personal, like, and personal be development. I don't want to play with the girls because two different things. Like, That's yeah. why I say it's important to understand how you're looking at equality mm -hmm. because for sure you're both right. Yeah, we can but you're looking at equality this, but, different yeah. ways. And like I grew mm -hmm. up always playing with boys because I knew well. I was a tomboy, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I also knew that playing with boys would make me better at things, and it did. Yeah. So and I understand the development, but at the at the program level. You, if there's a girls team, you can't just have girls like playing on boys teams because then, well, then why is it called a boys team if the girls are going to choose not to play on the girls team? And right. then, and then if that starts happening, more and more girls are going to want to do that. And then you don't have a girls team. Right. And then where's your girls development? Like, I see both sides of the argument, and it's like, yeah, because like I've been in the position where girls have played boys hockey, and as a result, like 
I wanted to play girls, but there wasn't enough girls without those two or three other girls. So I had to go, I either played boys or I played up a level. Um, but if they didn't play the boys hockey, we would have had a team of everyone our age kind of thing. Yeah, I'm much more of the opinion of Megan, where I think it's, like... I think if, if there was equal, sh- like, shared resources between the two teams, and, like, mm. I, I've I've always kind of seen that the resources are kind of given more to the men than the women in, in most cases, but I feel like if the resources were dispersed e- equally to both teams, mm-hmm. like, I'd, much, I'd be much more for that than I would be, you know, girls getting the opportunity to play on the guys' teams and mm-hmm. stuff like that. If you were to build both teams... The same and have, way. And, and have competitive teams on both sides. Like, I I understand your point, wanting to play with the men's team because you feel like it'd be, it would For be sure. better competition, but I feel like it would be hindering the growth of, of the women's sport as well. The issue there is that an investment in men developing talent and in sports, it's an investment you might actually get rewarded after. In <laughs> women, it's it's hard because yeah. like when you, when you develop an elite athlete through your like or your own ranks, actually you're gonna see that investment that in marketing in media with women you don't see that. So that as that allocation of resources, it's a, it's like a different subject. Like it, it goes uh, hand in hand with a different part than equality. Yeah, yeah, it's like run as a business, like back to. But just, Evan, to go off of your point, um, ringette, boys play ringette, and it's a predominantly girl sport, but boys are playing on ringette teams. When I played ringette, I had a, boy, I had a couple of boys on my team. Correct me if I'm wrong, but they do that so they can learn how to skate. Isn't that the thing? They do it to learn how to skate, but also to play. Because ringette's like, the... Like, I had... I, I knew Ringette's like the easiest way to learn how to skate, isn't it? For our non Canadian <laughs> listeners, can you explain what that is? <laughs> That's so um, funny. <laughs> um, okay, bring it. It's similar to hockey, um, except for having a like uh, a stick with a blade. It's just a straight stick with either a metal piece or a plastic piece at the end. And instead of a puck, it's a ring. It's a rubber blue ring. And they have different rules. It's played on the same set of ice surfaces and stuff. Five five players on each team are allowed to be on the ice. Um, you know, there's different equipment a little bit and stuff like that. But it's now it's actually growing a lot in New Brunswick. More females are playing that of ringette than they are playing hockey right now. And more men have started because they're not getting as many opportunities in hockey because of the whole competitive streaming and all that stuff. At a, at that kind of age group, they're switching over to ringette. Is there like male teams? Um, there's a couple, but they play with the girls mostly. But that's how girls started out in hockey. Yeah, I, and I wonder if that's like, like just so there not being the opportunity yeah. for them to play, and that that being the only way to play. And I, I would I would agree with you on the other side that you know if there wasn't like I, I had girls, there wasn't enough to make a girls team, they'd, so they play for our team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that's perfectly fine. The other thing I just wanted to mention it. I just remembered it. When you're talking about, you know, um, you're not helping the female side. Of, again, going back to hockey, the girl's going to go play hockey, boys hockey because she wants to develop or whatever. The majority of the national women's hockey team play boys hockey. So for girls to get interested in hockey, guess what they're going to watch? Mm-hmm. The Olympics. They're going to watch the junior, the, yeah, junior women's worlds yeah. or the IIHF worlds. Yeah. And all those top level athletes all play boys hockey. Who do they play exhibition games against? Major triple A boys mm-hmm. hockey teams. So for you for people to think that just splitting it up and having men and women, all your top level athletes are playing boys hockey or playing with the boys and competing and doing that individual development. So if you take that away all you're going to have is that side, and yes, it will increase to a certain level. But in the long run, are you going but to are we going to continue what, at that high level? What other opportunities are there for the women's team, like like teams to play against? Yeah, like if if they don't play, I think the CWHL, American teams. Then. Yeah, I guess like I think play in like Swedish, yeah. yeah, but they want to play against the men's teams. 
Well, that's cheaper and it's cheaper. easier. Like if they're training, it's not Calgary necessarily or... cheaper. It's it's not it's not about the cost or anything. It's about the level of play. They want to play with the 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 boys because of that, and it's the physicality and it's getting them ready for a North American style of hockey. Yeah. But if we take if if we start now and say no, you can't play, you know, boys hockey to develop and the stuff we've been talking about. Ten years down the road, the athletes that are coming up. Are they going to be as strong? Yeah, I think that's that's a fair thing to say. I mean, like to me, when I think of it, is is it is it is it maybe just like women's hockey is still kind of in its like infancy of growth, where you're starting to see it grow more. You're starting to see like the CWHL start to pick up more, start to get more interest in it, and maybe it's something that we might see, you know, five ten years down the road, where the women's national team isn't playing exhibition games against midget men's teams mm. or midget AAA yeah. men's teams and, and instead they're playing against the CWHL All-Stars or, um, you know, well, playing... They're, they're all national yeah. players. So they're, it's kind of, yeah. you know, hard to do that, but... <laughs> well, I'm... Play against yeah. It be like NCAA yeah. and But I mean, but the same thing them. happens in, um, like, professional lacrosse. Like, Worlds were this year. The American team, they, they had the All-Star game was... The American national team playing against the MLL All Stars. Mm-hmm. So even though the American national team, like the majority of that team, would have ended up on the All Star team, they picked from the rest of the players there to play. And I know there's only like what is there six teams still the CWHL? Like so, Five or six, yeah. yeah. So I mean, you could easily make mm-hmm. you know An- another team, another like team out of that. They might not be the the best players in the league, but you could do something like that, where at least they're getting that experience. And obviously, there'd be like. American women's national players on that team, and probably other international players on on uh, other teams, right? Yeah. So you could do something like that, but I think for me, when I when I think of if we're using women's hockey as the the, the example for this, like I still think that women's hockey is still growing. Uh, it's it's still growing. It's yeah. still at that infancy age. I mean, the how old is the CWHL? Um, seven years old. Yeah. Um, but women's hockey is declining now. It's not like it's not getting any better. Yeah. It's now participation levels have dropped. The population's declining too, though, so you have to account for that a little bit, I think. Yeah, fair enough. I think but worldwide like, it's starting to grow, though. Yeah. I think you're starting to see more more teams getting involved and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Kind yeah, of well, taking it I a mean, bit more serious. Like this is a conversation. The whole. Like for hockey, for girls playing with the boys, it's a conversation that me and my other two coaches that we talk about constantly because we all grew up playing boys hockey. Yeah. And if you talk to the majority of all star players for the past 10 years to now, they've all played boys hockey growing up. I don't doubt that at all. It's, I mean, I understand the need and the want to make it girls and boys. But you're taking away opportunity. I think that maybe this is where hockey associations need to step in and they need to do, I'm sure they're doing lots of work right now with female hockey, but I mean, I think that maybe a stronger um, program needs to be put in place to, to help this because at the same time, if women are starting to, or girls are starting to... Um, cross over and play men's, I mean, then if you look at it the other way around, you're, we're starting to take um, opportunity away from some male players who maybe are weaker, but they want to develop themselves as players also. So, I mean, there, there's two sides to this coin here, and there's, you know, there's so many arguments that we could go on, but I really think that the hockey associations need to start doing more to help develop the women's, not just hockey, but women's sport in general. Um, it's just that Canada loves hockey, so there's so much emphasis on that. Well, that's anyway. that's where it's going to start. If, if yeah. it's any place, that's where it's going to start. Yeah. But evidence to date being part of that side of things, it hasn't, and it's getting worse. Yeah, and the, this recent wave of mass globalization of soccer is starting to hit North America, mm-hmm. and you can see it in the PS, in Canadian PSOs, right? How actually like every PSO from the province has to deal with the growth of soccer mm-hmm. in said province, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's, and 
for women it's an an attractive sport. Mm -hmm. So yeah, especially with how well the women did in Olympics mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah, and it's we're huge right now. This year. Yeah. But uh, do you guys think that like in parallel to hockey, mm -hmm. do you think? And I don't really know, like, because personally, I never played with the boys when I played soccer. But do you think any of those women who are on the national team played with the boys when they were growing up? Well, why don't we look it up? No, I'm, I'm, I, I don't think so. Not to the extent hockey. that hockey has, yeah. because there's so many, mm -hmm. so many more women's soccer programs in general than there is women's hockey programs. Mm -hmm. But well, I mean, like, but let's also look for a second at the resources that are provided in women's soccer mm -hmm. compared to women's hockey. Yeah, it's it's the training and and you know when you drive by a field or whatever you see guys and girls training together in the same camp or whatever the case is, right? And yes, they may play on different soccer teams and have women's soccer and men's soccer, but they train together and they practice together. I think an interesting fact to look further to that is to look at our national teams in hockey, women's hockey, and women's soccer and their placement on the international level. I yeah. mean, our women's hockey team is pretty well yeah. one of the top teams, whereas our women's um, soccer national team is just kind of starting to break through and, like, create discussion on them, whereas they were non-existent, basically. But to be fair, North American interest in soccer, it's new, right? Whereas your uh, obsession with hockey, it's... Quiet. Men's so, hockey obsession with men's hockey. There's a difference. There's yeah. a Canadian obsession with hockey. Yeah. <laughs> Without mentioning gender. Would you agree with that statement? Okay. okay. Ask ask everybody like what game they remember about the Olympics. If they like would have rather watched the men's game or the women's game. Like which game was more exciting to them? Yeah. A lot of people will say the women's because yeah, the just women's because game was fun. Well, yeah, it was, but it was, I think it was yeah. just because of the, the, the they, game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You you mean still, over over yeah. Canada US? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love Canada US. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody does. Rivalry. All right. Um, well I think we've kind of exhausted that issue. But I think like like that was fun. Like if you look at other sports too, like you look at like women's MMA for example, like mm -hmm. women's MMA is growing huge mm -hmm. and you're seeing you're seeing now with the growth of, you know, one one female athlete in particular uh, in Ronda Rousey, you're seeing other other martial artists coming, you know, from you know their own backgrounds, wanting to come to MMA and the UFC in particular to to show off their talent. So you're seeing, you know, um, there's a girl that fought on the same card, Holly Holm, who was like a yeah. world champion boxer. Um, Muhammad Ali's son or son daughter um, called her out the other day, mm -hmm. like. Um, I, I know that there's there's so many like women that are wanting to get into the sport now. It's starting to grow um, all because of that, and it's starting to become more popular. I think um, I think similar to, to what we talked about with women's hockey, it, like women's MMA is still kind of in, in its infancy. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing you know this one elite girl in Ronda Rousey who's just crushing everybody who comes up against her talent wise because she is that talented, but. I think the thing that, you know, you look five, ten years down the road, uh, similar to women's hockey, it's there's gonna be that there's gonna be that closing gap, right? Competition's gonna get better. There's gonna be more training opportunities, yeah. uh, more opportunities profet to professionalize for these women as well, because many of them, similar to a lot of the men that are starting out, you know, that's not their full time thing. Like yeah. and I think that that might be the difference between professional women's and professional men's sport is a lot of the a lot of the women work as well as play sports and you know if you look at the big four sports but they have to yeah that's the thing right and, and um, I don't know like I think that's the thing that I'm getting at is that women don't have that opportunity yet I hope it changes it'd be sweet to see if it changes because then you get to see the competition increase but yeah but for that to change you need a market yeah. and yeah. to get that's a market you need a product yeah, yeah. And get that, the product it's so no, no, and exactly exactly the society to view <clears throat> women's sport as entertainment. I mean, I know, like, just generally speaking, um, 
men some men won't watch women's sport because well it's not as fast Mm -hmm. it's not as entertaining it's not this it's It's not that yeah it's boring it's girls i don't want to watch girls (laughs) like (laughs) to be fair i'm a basketball nerd what (laughs) no way so i kind of enjoy women's basketball because since there's not as much strength or explosive explosive athleticism and they need the strategies and skills. For example, Becky Hammond. Becky Hammond now is an assistant coach for San Antonio Spurs. First full-time assistant coach in the NBA, as female, right? Mm-hmm. But she was never particularly fast, particularly explosive. It was just super smart, mm-hmm. IQ. And I like that. But still, it's a struggle to yes. watch the game because if you don't see something amazing, Mm-hmm. You kind of slowly lose lose interest, right? Yeah. So even I, that I'm a basketball nerd, get that frustration. So there, it needs to happen, like to find this competitive advantage, this particular factor that makes women's sports okay. amazing. <laughs> and tennis. What makes women's tennis so amazing to watch? In my opinion, it, it, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> no. But there is the ratings for tennis, women's tennis, have increased dramatically. And it's cl- clearly because they sexualize the athletes. They make them look more appealing. They will wear short skirts. They will do certain things. I mean, Javier, you talked earlier when we were off about <laughs> making specific sounds to make... To make it look better, right? To make it seem better. To make it more attractive. Yeah, yeah. and even like <laughs> even in magazines and stuff, how how are women dressed but in sports magazines? To be fair, isn't there like a specially a special like bikini football league in which women play football oh, yeah, and wearing bikinis? Is that a hit? See, I think that's that's, it's that's it's the prime example a, though yeah. of sexualizing women's yeah. sport. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm gonna I, play football, but I have to wear a bikini to be able to be for it to be entertaining for the rest of the world. Okay, but that's my question. Like, if that doesn't work, like sexualizing, it's not a foolproof. You also need talent. You're you're not gonna tell not to me that not, no, no, not necessarily. You're not gonna tell me that Arancha Sanchez. You're not gonna tell me that <laughs> that Lisa Davenport was hot. No, Venus Williams, Serena Williams. They're not necessarily hot. I'm sorry. Legs like this. Marina Sharapova, uh, whatever her name is. Yeah, she's hot, but cool. But, and guess what? She but, is but, one of, if you Googled her, she would be the first one who came up. Well, no. well she, uh, if you Googled women's tennis, you mean. Yeah. 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 If you Google her, obviously she's going to come up. No, but, right there. but yeah, no, fair point. But, and, but I mean, if you look even, at if you look at the, they changed it now, so it's no longer the lingerie football league; it's the legends football league. Wow! But look at that. But they're like, not legends. Like, like, what are they showing? Yeah. I'm gonna show the ass. I'm gonna show this. Like they're not and like that's. But okay, I don't agree with it. But wow, um, that is <laughs> yeah. Like, that's the own factor that Javier is saying that he's yeah. missing. When he watches women's sport, is that no, well? I, not I, that. I, no, no, no. I mean, I'm not I mean, that's but the the explosive, I'm no, no. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me reword. But the, careful, the explosiveness careful. isn't there, right? So because maybe sometimes women don't don't have that like men's sport do, they feel like they have to come up with something else, and that's what it is. Sad but true. I don't agree with it, but I mean, it's been working for athletes. Sex sells. Give me one second. Sex sells. Sex effing the cells. But I'm just saying that in female tennis, yeah, you might actually get the outliers that like Anna Kornikova, Mariana Sharapova, they were just hot. But you get real talent. Like Martina Hingis was insanely good. Hillary Knight's Sports Illustrated cover. <sighs> but they do that for... The men too. The men they? too, yeah. Not... Like that, not like mm. that. Well, See, I, no. let's be honest. But, but, okay. th- but that's okay. a perfect Look at explanation. Look at there's a perfect Rogers. explanation for that. But that's a well, perfect explanation for that. The, what is it? The prime market for sports, it's Sex men. Appeal. It's men. The prime okay. market is men. So if obviously I don't want to see. That's not. I don't. I don't want to see. Yes. Yeah. I don't want to see. Cal- I don't want to see Carrie Price in Underwear, <laughs> but I wouldn't mind seeing Alex Morgan in Underwear. <laughs> that, that's my point. 
like if pri if men it's a prime market yeah. you are targeting okay. them because okay. you need profits if you you don't have profit you won't, <laughs> won't have a sustainable business and that's the point that's what i mentioned at the beginning one thing is to give the opportunity to create a sustainable business and another thing is to actually have the potential if, to be one but if we're creating this sex appeal i mean evans just posted like three or four different pictures of women on espn <laughs> with bikinis on with a basketball you know like those sorts of things. How are we given the opportunity to be able to Those get to that professional that. level? Yeah, but to be fair, I was like, I was showing you. There's guides that are being put. Oh, those were men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but okay. I mean, I can find. I can easily find. Let me, let me weigh in on this for a second. <laughs> oh, this is uh -oh. this is what I see. Okay, I I I don't agree with the sexualization of women's sport, but. What I do see sometimes when I look at those pictures of women, women athletes who pose suggestively or naked is that there's a strong woman who's confident to do so, who's worked hard to get where she is with a healthy body image. That's what I see too. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I don't... You for sure. And you know what I mean? And like when Ronda Rousey came out with those um, those pictures that I don't I don't know who she did them for. Maybe that Sports was, Illustrated that was as, well. Body as well. Yeah, see that's at I first I was like, Oh man, why'd she do that? Yeah. Why'd she sell out? Like that's that's weak. I, but then I, agree. I looked again and yeah. I was like, you know what? She worked her ass off. Yeah. To get look to the way she, she is, looks, yeah. get where she is. And it's like, if you work hard at something, you're going to show it off. Mm -hmm. If you work hard in a sport tournament and you get a trophy, you're going to show that off. You work hard on your body. I'm not saying to sexualize it, but there is no reason that a woman can't no. show off her... If the opportunity is given, then why not? And especially where there's so many issues with women's body image and with eating disorders, yeah. it shows women that they can be fit and beautiful and strong. They don't have to be these demure ladies who are mm -hmm. waiting for these men to rescue them. <laughs> That's what I see. No, but okay. I And I completely agree with that, that concept. But why do boxers, women boxers, have to wear skirts? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, that, that is but, not my scope. But, and, and, and these are sorts of things. Why, you know, like, tennis players, why do they have to wear what they wear? Why do golfers have, women golfers have to wear what they wear? And, and look like that. And the other thing, it, it's just, they, it's not that women feed into it, but to get recognized and to get, you know, money and prize money and all of this stuff mm -hmm. and endorsements, they have to put out a certain amount of entertainment. But that shouldn't be the way it is. It shouldn't be the way it is, but you need a market. You ask those boxers if they rather box in skirt or not box at all, guess what they're going to say. Right. It's that simple. I agree with you. It shouldn't happen. You, sh you should actually value the athlete for their skills. Mm -hmm. Not the, the sexualization of that athlete, but you need to create a market. If it's not sustainable, it's not gonna happen. So unless we find that special something that makes that particular sport attractive, we use what we have. But, and I mean, I agree with you, like in practicality, but in theory and philosophy, I guess, <laughs> um, shouldn't it be the other way around? It's an, it's an utopia. I agree with you. Like, I, I, we I shouldn't, you. they shouldn't have to do that to get that endorsement. It should be, look at these women, look how well and how skilled they are. This is going to be a great sport to watch, whatever it is. Why, as a society, can't we see that? And I mean, this goes back, back to historical to, groups, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, but to be but, fair... To be fair, part of the problem is that these sports are compared with men's sport, which by genes and not nature have physical skills that allow them to make a more attractive sport. So if you go to uh, female dom dominated sports, um, for example, field hockey, like you can act you actually have fans of teams with value in their skills. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's gonna be some fans that are gonna be focusing on different stuff, but in great majority, you have fans of the sport. So yeah, the the the, the 
how close that sport is to male sports and that comparison is not helping the women's case. Um, I read this quote and I just kind of want to ask you guys a question off of it um, in one of our articles and it's uh, should women demand for equal press coverage and prize money with like the way that we currently are without the sexualization or everything should they demand to be equal to professional sport in the case of men's hockey, men's basketball, and all the other sports. I think they could, but would they get it? I think the thing is that, that the demand doesn't come from the athletes, the demand comes from the people watching the sport. Yeah, that's true. So Because everybody watching wants to know what's going yeah. on with the team, like behind the scenes, whatever. So that's and like, you have to build if, that fan base in order to... If we look at this as a business, or yeah, exactly. step over, because like, if, we look, if we look at this as a business... If I'm if I'm running a uh, you know professional sports league and the women's side isn't making money and the men's side is making you know tons of money just based off the men like like it's super simple like I'm just gonna go with a, a subject I um, I know of um, if you if you have the WNBA players demanding more money and for the for Adam Silver and the NBA it becomes a matter of actually, okay, now you're gonna cost me how much now? Sorry, it's, it's done. Like, no, go, play, every, go play in Europe. If every basketball, women's basketball player stood up and said that, they go to play to Europe. There's no WNBA. Like, recently, I don't remember the name, I just read it. One play, one really good WNBA player went to play to Sweden, I think, or Norway, because she got paid like 10 times what she got paid in WNBA. So in Europe, you, you, you don't have the sponsorships or the markets or the attention or the media or whatever, but you get paid more. Yeah. And you get paid for your skills, not for you, how attractive you are, right? Mm -hmm. So, again, Maybe they you, need have a market. Right. you need a market to make it work. That's fair. All right, so then... In relation to collegiate sport and coverage, should they demand the right for more coverage? I stand next to Evan in this. If there's not a market that demands there, it's not about marketing. It is. But that it is. But it's you're not televised. When you're talking it, about professional sport, it is. We're not talking about professional okay. sport. We're talking about collegiate sport. Right. I think it is. But different. Different. Collegiate sports still make money. But it's still. But like, it doesn't yeah. matter. Uh, <laughs> that that aspect of it. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna have budget cuts. You might cut a team. But regardless, there are rules in place to have so many women and so many men and all that stuff. And the coverage ratio for women to men in collegiate sport is quite different. I think right. I so think should they demand for a higher for higher coverage? And I'm talking, yeah, NCAA is more of a professionalized mm -hmm. business. What about the CIS? CIS, CIS is CIS not. Two different CIS things. showed the women's hockey nationals. I yeah, think if you look at it from if you look at it from an NCAA perspective, There's I would argue that there are two sports they show, and that's men's football, men's basketball, yeah. and that's it. Like they, yeah. they show like you know um, ESPN you really does a really good job of trying to trying to um, like promote stuff through like ESPN U and stuff, and like if you go to their like extra channels, you can watch a lot of college sports. You can watch. Um, like women's and men's, and it's and it's fairly shared equal. But if you look at it from you know the everyday fan perspective of what the everyday fan's going to see, they're only going to see college basketball. They're only going to see college football. And if you look at it from a Canadian perspective, you know the CIS in itself is not not that well promoted. No, but I'm not just talking about on TV. I'm talking about in newspapers. I'm talking about. The type of games, the seven o'clock primetime game compared to the four o'clock game. I think about all of those different things. That's part of coverage. I think so, they do a really good job of that here. I, I kind of disagree with you. I think that they do a really good job at, at splitting here, the times equally. At UNB, but yeah. not everywhere else. And that's what I'm getting at. It's across the board in CIS, not just at one university. One university could be great at that. Okay, They yeah. really consider it. But what about the rest of them? Well, like I have, we, when I was in Windsor, there was only one team that got the 7 o'clock primetime because they were actually, they provided a greater fan base than the other ones. 
and that was the only women's team that allowed that. We got a better fan base, and we were a better hockey team than the men's hockey team at that point. We didn't get the prime time because it's men's hockey. We didn't get the bigger locker room that people actually had to pay for until the men's team had to move to the same rink we were at, and the men's team got that locker room. Tell me how that's equal opportunity and equal coverage and all of that stuff. No, that's not. Well, it's not. No, that's not. <laughs> like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then obviously the CIA, like, should they demand for more? So, should, should they ask for it? So we're getting to a point in which, okay, if there's money involved, it doesn't make any sense for them to demand it because the market demands and determines what, yes, who gets what. I will, I will definitely okay. go with you on that now, one. Now, we're going to go to that uh, <coughs> level. Yeah. Then I will agree. Okay. I will agree because it, it, it you need to create equal opportunity and if you need to create equal opportunity. I think I think what you're getting at also is that it's not just equal opportunity. I mean the teams are there, the opportunity is there. It's now getting into equal treatment. Whereas they're both playing the the same sport, so I mean essentially they should get equal treatment. They should get equal resources unless they go above and beyond and get their own funders, mm -hmm. I think. And that's an important point because <sighs> now <laughs> we get into who makes the shots, like who calls the shots, right? And athletic directors. If you're looking, if you're looking at universities, you're looking at athletic directors. But that's my point. And what is the ma the but majority the, of them are what? That's exactly my point. <laughs> that's exactly my point. So males control the resources. So you need, women need to have males on their side and males need to actually work with them and want the same thing, mm -hmm. right? Because without, them. With, <laughs> without them, this cannot happen because, because of, uh, of X amount of years of male... Uh, Prejudice? <laughs> authority or un dominance. unfair author dominance, unfair dominance or whatever, mm -hmm. however you want to call it. Mm -hmm. They have the resources, they control the resources. Mm -hmm. And without them, change, keyword change, cannot happen. I think that's fair. Um, I mean, like you look at today, athletic directors, general managers, coaches, they're dominated by men, even in women's hockey, like women's, women's hockey, sports. Women's sport. Yeah. Like that's across the board. I think I have some stats. A As a side note, a shout out for everyone watching March Madness. Go Duke! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so in women's sport in the CIS, 80% of head coaches were men and 20% were women. That's in all the CIS women's sports. It's kind of sad. Yeah, but now it gets to a point in which like, there's a, this perception that a sport that are, in which men are, are more attractive playing than women they know the sports better, right? Is that that ar like that article that you sent us? And that mm -hmm. and that needs to change, Talk and that's it. and that needs to change from the youth right now because change the perception of grown families it's not that easy, right? So you need to change uh, the, the way they race. You need to actually send a different message. Yeah. No, I agree. I just, I mean, now we're getting into youth sport and the need for change at that level to allow. You know, for us, I mean, this year we have three women coaches, right? We have, and and it's it's all about we keep being we keep being told that it's about role models and that kind of stuff, and we provide good role models so that they know that you can get into a level of being um, at a coaching at <laughs> at, a, at a level where you can coach and you can provide that leadership and be in that authority position, but. How many of the time do you see parents end up being coaches of a team because you don't have proper coaching? And how many times do you see that it's the dads who are going to coach? So then it starts from a young age. Yeah, now um, it will be interesting to know how these young women that played hockey, for example, as, as a child, they got to be the mothers of families. And they are interested in coaching, right? Because maybe at some point we're going to see that, 
Yeah. Right? If you have a family now and your kid actually plays kids. hockey, <laughs> if your kid plays hockey, <laughs> would you be interested in coaching that team? No, I will never coach any of my kids. Because I will <laughs> not deal with them properly. <laughs> <laughs> you're really your hard coaching on them. philosophies are, are yeah. probably too strong yeah, they for your kids. Yeah, so. they would be. <laughs> you're benched. That's why, I, that's why I wouldn't. If I. But mommy! <laughs> yeah, that clean, wouldn't go over home. very well. You're yeah. done for the yeah. season. Yeah. <laughs> Hang up those skates. What? You want to play gymnastics? No. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be good at that. I wouldn't be a good coach for, like, parent coach. But I don't, in, and this is my fundamental opinion, and, you know, you can disagree with me or whatever, but parents shouldn't coach. They should not coach their own kids. And unless you have proper classifications and you have proper background and you have proper knowledge of the sport, you should not be a coach. What like. Agreed. But where does the change come from? If we're talking about gender equality, where... We, we've seen it, so we've talked about professional. We've talked about collegiate a little bit, and now we're talking about youth sport. We've seen it all across sports and media coverage. Where does it begin? How 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 are we going to change it? I mean, I we in this room can't really. We can. We can help the change, but we're not going to be the change. I think that's a hard question, but when it comes down to it, what we need is more women athletes. So in order to have youth athletes to be able to look up to these grown senior women athletes on national teams, I mean, if we're not developing athletes, they're not going to be there. So maybe we need to start at the bottom and work our way up. I like that. Grassroots, yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> do you? I do like that. <laughs> but guess what? I'm just going to circle, circle it all back. Oh, yeah. How can. do they develop and become on that national level? Team? That's where we need to go back to the, <laughs> the, the sport organizations. And they need to set these. And I mean, I'm not saying they're not doing that. I know they have a lot of work. Like, yeah, they have but a lot of. Who in the sport organization? The provincial sport organizations. They need to uh, do, okay, do the work guess, at the grassroots. Guess grass what roots. the PSOs are going to do? They're going to go and shove it right into all the minor sports organizations and say, hey, it has to be guess everyone. what you guys can do? Go do this. And then you know what they're going to do? Oh, guess what? You can go and do no. this coaches. And then guess what? The coaches are going to be like, I don't know what I'm doing. They, they all need to come together and some strategic planning needs to take place so that every under, everyone understands what their role is and what they should be doing and where they should be at. I think, that's, I think it's fair. Um, but... Who's gonna do it? Oh my God! We need like God or something to just <laughs> no, like. But is this? And, and I'm curious. I mean, we obviously don't have Jesus the interworkings of, of Sport Canada, but I'm I'm wondering: Are there roundtables discussing this? Are is this a priority for them? Is this like what is? I don't I don't think it is a priority because right now they're just worried about getting programs out there in general. Mm -hmm. So the they're they're <laughs> yeah, looking at me. Um, so to narrow that focus into specific target populations is is not on their radar. I think it is on their radar, but they have to clear way first before they can get there. I would like to add that I would say that their focus is on developing elite talent, not to not anymore, not anymore. Really? Foundations. I've gone over this in my presentation on foundations. Okay. Regarding the sport Canadian framework. Long term athlete yeah, development. Long term and all of this. It has changed. Participation has now become a major concentration for Sport Canada, and elite sport has kind of started to take the back burners. Interesting. Okay. Were you not there? My well, no, I, I think you're right. Is that it has. Sport Canada has made this, and they've implemented all the sport organizations. What has yet to change is society's mentality. Yeah. Yeah. This goes back about to like elite. Entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're like on a carousel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the problem. How are you gonna break it? Like it's, it's a ring. It's a circle. It's a circle. <laughs> How are you gonna break it? You mean like one ring to rule them all? Okay, I'm sorry. Well, that and also, gotcha. how do you? What is it? I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. It's a circle. <laughs> I, I missed that. Okay. So, so, you gotta watch. You gotta watch. Good. But no, I, I stand by by my my argument that it needs to start at the grassroots okay, and build up from there. I mean, I, I don't think it's going to be quick, but... What are your thoughts? Where do you think you should, we should start? I like the idea of getting more women athletes. So, yeah, at this point, you have to start developing 
from the grassroots. Evan? Um, I think, like, I think we're starting to see women's sport grow. Like, mm-hmm. I, I feel okay. like, um, I, I don't know, like, I've just noticed from the media, like, you see, like, stars, like, in soccer, like Christine Sinclair, is starting to get a lot more prevalency after the Olympics. You see um, women's tennis starting to go on the rise again. You see, you know, athletes like Ronda Rousey, um, Lindsey Vaughn and skiing. Like, they're starting to get a lot more attention. And I think, like, it's something that I think is, is women's right movement continues to gain more prominency. And I think it's something that you're going to start seeing growing. And there's going to start to be demand for it. And I think, um, like, for me, when I watch sports, as long as I find it entertaining and, like, suspenseful, like, I'm going to watch it regardless if it's men or women. Um, So for me, like, I'm I'm not as, like, pessimistic as it is. As, as some people might be, like, I really think that it's starting to grow, and okay. maybe that's my, me putting <laughs> my blinders on, but... No, I agree, for sure, like, um, the popularity of, like, especially women's soccer now is a lot bigger than it was a couple of years ago, and, I mean, you don't really hear anything about the men's soccer team, um, so I think that I mean, it's kind of trending, yeah, <laughs> but it doesn't matter, like, you know, the Leafs suck, but yeah. they still... <laughs> take out all oh, wow! <laughs> Throw that one in there. Wow. But yeah, no, I think it's trending in the right so direction. We just have to. We just have to. Well, the it's least, not the something that. If, if, you, if I'm the first person to tell you that, then you, know. <laughs> you, you need to get out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just would like to add one more thing. Um, I just want to like highlight the fact that we need uh, the owners of real resources agreeing with us like we need to get them on the table we need to get them to discuss how we're going to do this without the resources this cannot be done and and the boys club or whatever how you want to call it the old boys club those are the owners of the resources and they need to agree with us or they need to actually start doing this or at least discussing and giving everyone the chance to present their argument for this right Alrighty, well, thank you very much. Um, if you're still listening, yeah, <laughs> thanks sorry. for sticking with us. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Well, have a good night, guys. Peace out.